so let's get started. September the 29th already. Uh, September, October, November, December. You've got three months left, y'all. The last quarter. We're in the fourth quarter of this year. Are you ready? We'll find out. We'll find out. I want to start off by giving a shout out to uh, Momentum Title, our sister company that's exclusively for Benchmark. Uh, just a few items to point out there. Remember, your first closing is free. Uh, your personal home is free. Uh, your personal investment properties are 50% off. Uh, well, there's only one closing fee, so if they get both sides, they'll share that between the two sides. And then there's always a $500 credit for veterans and first responders. Um, so take advantage of that. Processing at MomentumTitleTN.com, and uh, they will handle your file. And also remember that uh, the revenue from that company helps provide the free tools that we provide here at Benchmark. You can see a few of those on the screen now. The biggest one of which is the Benchmark Dash, which is kind of the, the hub where everything Benchmark happens. You want to be sure and clue in there and especially want to look at the training and events calendar that we have there. We've changed. We've modified the way we register for classes now. You go there, click on the date. It'll show you all the classes. Then you click on the class and it will. you can register for the class that way instead of using Eventbrite. We were having issues with Eventbrite. In many cases, people from weird areas of the country logging in and trying to get into our events and it just didn't work we even had an event out back here one day and some politicians showed up because they saw it on event right so we had to kind of stop that if you're on the dash and you have an issue you have the uh, the chat feature down here that is an algorithm a robot but it also connects to a live person if you need one and it will help you we've got a lot of keywords in there using a little ai here a lot of keywords in there that will help you locate what you need on the dash and the, the uh, all of these are tiles that you see here um, the most important of which I will point out is the uh, the ones up here. Uh, when you click on those, the, clip, the first one, the big red B, um, is takes you to the uh, agent resources. Lots of agent resources on there. A lot of the things that I see on the closed group asking for this, where is this, where do I find that? You can find it right here on agent resources. So you want to check that out, including Fridays with Philip and the complete slide deck. Uh, all of these, once they process, we post them there. We're actually putting the videos out on YouTube now, so that's a good thing. But uh, be sure and pay attention to that because you know what's going on. We have changed the checklist. So I want to say, mind your checklist. First of all, I keep seeing this checklist show up in the pipeline. And, and when I was teaching orientation, the first thing I always said is, let's read this out loud. What I've just circled in red and what is actually printed in yellow there, do not send this checklist to the pipeline, yet we keep seeing them in there. There's a specific process to follow that the form details out. But one thing I want to point out to you is this down below is that we have changed the emails to submit your, uh, your checklist to. Instead of individuals, we're making them unique to each location. Uh, this is uh, in the preparation for growth, of course, so that we can move people around as we need to move people around. And we have a location address for each address for each location. So if you were with Cool Springs, you would send it to Cool Springs 112 at benchmarkrealtytn.com or Cool Springs 115 at benchmarkrealtytn.com. So anyway, a little housekeeping there. Um, Expo is coming up October the 12th. Uh, this is a big day, big day. Nine o'clock doors open. We're going to have one hour of free CE credit. So all you got to do is sign up. You got to be there at the beginning of the of the class. If you come in 10 minutes late, you will not get credit for it. So 1030 to 1130 is the one hour CE credit. Uh, Kimberly Irie, our director of training, has put together a CE class and we'll be teaching that. We're going to have lunch and vendors. We're going to do this a little bit different than we have in the past. In the past, we had a sit down meal in one room and we had the vendors in the other room. Now we're having them. We're, we're going to have a grazing event. We're going to graze as we go through and talk to the vendors. And by the way, we are completely sold out for vendors on this event. We've got uh, close to 70 vendors and they are not all home inspectors. So be sure and show up. And then at 1245, we're going to have a panel discussion. Uh, some of our top producing agents there. Bethany, Kate, uh, Landon, and, and Matt uh, are going to have a panel, and they're talking about identifying your brand, something that is critically important in a down market because people pay attention to the brand. You see that on your screen there. You've got the uh, got the QR code. You can you can squiggle that thing on your phone and register right now if you want to. Um, we also have flyers hanging up in all the offices, or you can go to the Benchmark Dash training and events calendar and register that way. We want to kind of get a head count so we know how much food to order. 
But again, this is a more of an informal event than it has been in the past. We'll just have the education in one room and then we'll have the vendors and the food all together in the other room. So be sure and be sure and show up for that. Mark it on your calendar. I also want to thank everybody that attended the Elevate, uh, Elevate Conference, the United Real Estate Elevate Conference down in Orlando. We had a really big time. And I want to show a quickie video here. Um, I just realized that I don't have the music that you can hear, but maybe you will be able to hear it. This is uh, produced by Krista Kelly with Momentum Title. Yes, <laughs> bottom line it was a lot of fun it was also a lot of learning and if you were not there you need to book it on your calendar for next year they haven't located the lo they haven't identified the location or the date yet, but as soon as that comes out, um, you need to take advantage of it and put it on your calendar. We're actually gonna send you a survey uh, here in the next day or so about getting your input on where you want it to be and when you want it to be. And if you attended, you'll get another survey that says, help us improve. What did you like about it? What did you not like about it? How can we do things better next year? And, and we had uh, this year, there were over 850 people there. So it was a really big event, and I think that of the 60 people, benchmarkians that went, I think every one of them is now an ambassador for the Elevate Conference. So we're looking forward to that next year as well. Be sure to put that on your calendar once we identify when the date is. All right, I want to remind you that our TAP program, our Talent Attraction program, is still, still running, and we have actually extended it through the end of the year. It actually was going to end September 29th today but they've extended it through January 31, 2024. So there's some fine print, obviously. The, uh, the referred agent has to have eight transactions in the previous 12 months. You, the referral agent, have to actually have a recruiting conversation with them and kind of introduce them to your broker or to Bo Zback. And then they will get $500. Uh, you'll get $500 when they join. They'll get a $500 credit for uh, brand conversion on the marketing hub, on the Bullseye Marketing Hub. And then once they've been here in 90 days, you will get another $500. So be sure and take advantage of that. And if you want to know where to send them, who to talk to them, it's either your principal broker or Bo Zivak, or you can send them if they're just curious to uh, discoverbenchmark.com, which is our recruiting website that has a lot of information about Benchmark. All right, really big news. Coming soon to Bowling Green, Kentucky is Benchmark Realty. We've already got the sign up, still got a little repairs to do on the building there. Uh, it's located just off of I-65, right on um, Scottsville Road, which is kind of the main drag, that second Bowling Green exit, the main drag that runs into downtown Bowling Green. We're on the right-hand side, not far past Cabela's, I believe it is. So you want to, uh, once we have that big opening, we'll have a grand opening. Uh, kudos to Cole Melcher, he's the principal broker. Cole is the guy who sailed the Caribbean with his wife and two kids a year or so ago. And when they landed back in, in America, they landed back in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, where his uh, parents left. So it is good to have him there. And we're really looking forward to great things. Uh, so anybody you know that is looking for a fee-based revenue model in Bowling Green, Kentucky, send them the call. You see his contact info there on the screen. Of course, you can find that on any of our websites in our dash. 
Uh, also, we had a great grand reopening of the Murfreesboro office here recently. We moved to much larger quarters at 271 Robert Rose Drive. Uh, 271 Robert Rose is right across the street from First Community Mortgage. They're big multi-story building, so it's very easy to get to right off of Thompson Lane near Memorial uh, um, Medical Center Parkway is the name of the main drag there. Big event. These ladies had a charcuterie board from everywhere. It, it was in the entire conference, big conference room table. It was covered with food. And if you missed it, you missed out. Go by, check it out. Your key card works. Remember, benchmark ends. Your key card works at every benchmark office, 24 7, 365. So if you find yourself in the Murfreesboro area on a weekend <clears throat> and you need to stop in and write a contract or use the copier, we've got multiple conference rooms. We've got a bullpen area, which is upstairs here at this location. And we have everything you need at every location. And that's accessible 24 7, 365 to everybody who has a key card. Uh, also, I want to remind you about our vendor page on our Benchmark Realty TN website, <clears throat> Benchmark Realty TN forward slash vendors. We have a lot of a uh, lot of suppliers on there that like to do business with Benchmark ends, and so they have bought ads on this page. And if you know someone who needs to have their presence on this page, then click the Apply Here button, and they can fill out the form and go from there. So that's just released in the last day or so. Every administrative person throughout all of Benchmark has complete information on this as well. All right, we've been talking about the financial wellness program for a little bit now in Benchmark because we've been running a test kitchen approach with Benchmark, uh, Pearson Smith, and Charles Rittenberg Realty down in Florida. And now we're going to roll it out to the entire company starting January 14th. And just as a reminder, the reason we're doing this is because we collectively, corporately, are concerned about the huge rise in consumer debt. It's now, credit card debt is now over a trillion dollars. It's just ridiculous. And total consumer debt is rising at a rate of a trillion dollars a year. People are literally drowning in debt because they don't understand money. So we're trying to bring a program to them, to our affiliates that will help them understand money. We maximize earnings through United Real Estate and through Benchmark Realty. We provide, we're going to provide the savings and budgeting and education tools through Smart Dollar, the Ramsey Solutions Smart Dollar product. Uh, that is already available with Pearson, Benchmark, and Charles Rittenberg. It will be available to the rest of United Real Estate starting January 14th, and you'll be hearing a lot more about this soon. And then finally, we have a defined investment process and vehicle through Creative Planning out at Overland Park, Kansas. And Creative Planning is one of the largest private investment firms that you'll ever hear. We'll talk about that in just one second. Smart Dollar uh, is an app, a tool. You use it on your computer, use it on your phone, use it wherever you want to. It's about budgeting. It's about saving money. It's about paying off debt. It's about walking you through the baby steps of getting out of debt and leveraging that. And we've been engaged in the test kitchen for 100 days now. And from in those 100 days, the collective participants has reached 405 members. Yay. And those participants have had a quarter million dollar turnaround in 100 days. This program works. And that's why we're bringing it to the rest of United Real Estate. Um, if you annualize that $256,000, that would be north of a million dollars. You take that, and that's just in the 3,500 people that are in those three firms I mentioned. If you take that and project that across the whole 20,000 affiliates with United Real Estate across the entire nation, you're looking at a five, six, seven million dollar financial turnaround. This is impacting lives and why we're so passionate about it, because it is such a value, valuable, useful tool and so important in today's world. Can't emphasize that enough. And we do surveys while the participants are in the program. They're anonymous. We don't know exactly who they are, but how do you feel about certain stuff? And this happens to be one of the snapshot surveys. And you can see the gray bars are the beginning survey and the purple bars are the current survey. And you can see that in the beginning, 28% of the participants felt overwhelming stress about personal finances. That has dropped to 11%. Over on the right, no stress has gone up to 28%. 
So we are making progress here and only occasional stress is actually balanced out too. One thing I will stress about this program, it deals with their money. You input your bank accounts. We cannot see them. Your personal information is 100% confidential. We know your name. We can get a dollar value of what's being paid off and how active you are participating in the program, but we cannot see your bank accounts. We cannot see anything about you that's proprietary or private. So I want to stress that. It is a absolutely uh, immoral for us to try to do that and try to utilize that against you. And we would never do that. Uh, the second part of this financial wellness program is um, creative planning. And they are a comprehensive wealth management company out in Overland Park, as I mentioned. Um, and they do more than just financial advisory. This is not like the guy on the corner with his retail shop that handles 25 clients a year. This is a serious company. The ticket to play is to have $50,000 in savings. If you have that much in savings and you need a wealth advisor, these are your people. Uh, if you need legal, estate planning, trust administration, real estate transact, whatever you need, they have attorneys on staff, they have accountants on staff, 450 certified financial planners, 105 CPAs, 70 attorneys. If you want to set up an LLC for your firm or for your uh, receive your uh, earnings in, they can help you with that as well. $210 billion assets under management. That actually is closer to 250 now because they recently took over Goldman Sachs private wealth division and they are serving all 50 states. So wherever you're located and listening to me, we have the ability to help you in that area. We're going to send you to Brian Severino. He is a representative there that handles the uh, the United Real Estate Transactions, the United Real Estate Clients. And by the way, we don't receive a penny for this. We don't receive a penny for smart dollar either. We're pushing this to help you. We are not pushing this to have wealth for us. Um, it is actually illegal. We're not, we don't have a series 65 license, so we can't even receive anything from creative planning. So you want, if you need help, we're trying to bring those tools to the table and trying to bring the complete package. Now, the part that we were missing until recently was health insurance. And Benchmark Realty, United Real Estate, now has health insurance. You got this email from me on the 19th of, uh, 18th of this month, and I hope you saw it. If you didn't, you'll be hearing more about it because we're just now beginning to release it to the entire United Real Estate family. But uh, we were talking about true health care benefits, and we've got a website for you that will be in action, I believe, today, actually, you, ureghealthcare.com. Uh, get a quote, book a call, enroll. It all takes not much time at all. Um, here's the deal. 30% of agents don't have any health care. Do you know what the number one cause for bankruptcy in America is today? Health care costs. Somebody gets sick. Somebody has an accident. Somebody winds up in a wreck. They go bankrupt. They don't have any choice. This can help you with that. They have multiple plans. They will lower your fees, lower out-of-pocket costs, and upgrade the network to nationwide PPO. There are multiple options uh, and included in all the options are free tele telemedicine, preventive care, zero, uh, mental health, and low cost prescriptions with zero generic prescriptions, zero cost generic prescriptions. Um, three main types, healthcare plans, uh, 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 health share plans, uh, major medical, if you want a PPO, you want a copay, you want HSA, they've got it and it's very reasonable. Uh, and then also supplemental, which is di dental, vision, accident, critical illness, and that sort of thing. If they see that you need an ACA compliant plan, they will help you make the application through the healthcare.gov system. Uh, they have it all. And if you are already on the right plan, they will tell you honestly. Okay, so we have the, have the website there. Now, I'm going to give you a testimonial. I don't bring anything to the table that I haven't tried and tested myself. That's just how I work. Uh, as the uh, EVP of strategy for United Healthcare, uh, for, for United Real Estate, I felt like I had a higher responsibility even to go check this out thoroughly. So I put my own information in there. Now, I've been with Farm Bureau for five years, I guess. And my wife and I are on it. We're healthy. We rarely, we go to the doctor like twice a year for physicals. Um I put our information in there and right now I'm paying $1,100 a month with Farm Bureau. And so it costs me quite a bit of money and there's just the two of us and we're healthy. This program, I am going to save $3,600 per year and my maximum out of pocket dropped from $7,500 to $2,500. Let me say that again. It's going to save me 
$3,600 a year, hard cash that my health care costs me, and then my maximum out of pocket drops by $5,000. I encourage you, when we when you get the email about uregehealthcare.com, uregehealthcare.com, when you get the email that says this is up and ready to go, then you need to plug in and at least get a call so they and then see exactly what your comparison is. All right. Let's do some numbers for the company. Um, if you're not non-benchmarking, you probably just want to shut your mind off during this part, but it does kind of give you an idea of who we are and what we do. If you want to listen to it, that's okay too. All right. Um, August of 2023 versus 2022. I always do a comparison uh, year over year for that month. In 2022, we had closed 414 million paid over 10 million in commissions on 887 transactions. And our benchmarks average sales price was 467,000. Average sales price of all properties across all types uh, across the entire company. At the same time, the market closed 3,566 properties. Um, this August, we were down just like everybody else. 348 million, down 16%. Gross commissions were down 18.5%. Transactions were down 11.3%. And their average sales price was down 5.4%. Now, to be clear, that's our average, not the market average. Okay. That's the benchmark average sales price. So, the main thing we key in on is how do we do compare it to the market? And this month in August, the market kicked our butt. So, y'all better get out, of, get out of bed earlier and get to work, y'all. Uh, inventory was basically flat from the month before. Uh, still and actually down a little from the same in time last year, uh, while our affiliate count was up 2.4% to 1,533. So progress. Had some green numbers and some red numbers, but it is what it is. Year to date, July, this should be August 31 comparison, not July 31. I, many times as I look at these slides, something still sleeps up on me. Uh, we are down year to date 21.5% over our own numbers, 25.1 on gross commission, transaction counts down 20.3, and our average sales price, our average sales price is down 1.4. Again, we want to key in on this. So in August, the market beat us. Year to date, we're beating the market. So good for you guys. As you know, I always have this massive spreadsheet going because I'm a nerd and I like spreadsheets and I plugged in August numbers, which I don't expect anybody to understand that except me, but a picture tells a thousand words. How do we do gross sales, gross commissions and transaction count compared to the previous few years? And you can see along the bottom here, we have multiple years, 2017 all the way up to 2023, and you can see how they track. You can see the seasonality very clearly, but you can also see how they track according to previous years. And on gross sales, we are now tracking close to, uh, what is that, 2023 is the blue line right here, and the yellow line is 2020. So we are tracking right with 2020. Um, pretty much the same thing on gross commissions, tracking right with 2020. Transaction count, not so much. We're down uh, just below 2018 now. So that's typical for the rest of the market, I think, and typical for the rest of the United States. And we're going to talk more about that in just a second, because here we are at the larger market update. These are national numbers as well as state numbers and local numbers. Some of this is going to depress the heck out of you. Some of it's going to find encouragement for you. I got to present it because the facts are what the facts are, and I'm a total nerd on this stuff. So it is what it is. August existing home sales were down again. Uh, this is on a national basis, and what you're looking at on your screen there is a three-year view. 4.04 uh, million annualized. If it were, if this were December 31, we could say we closed 4.04 million this year. Uh, that is down 0.7 percent month over month, and down 15.3 percent year over year. So on a national basis, remember we were only down 11 percent nationally. So we're ahead of the national numbers, and I just struck a red line across here so you can kind of see how it falls out on the three year. If you want to look at that uh, on a, by the way, here's a note for you. The last time we broke below 4 million was April of 2009. Okay. On a national basis, the last time we broke below 4 million, you can see right here, we're almost there back in January, but broke 4 million was April of 2009. The last time we had a cumulative year below 4 million was 1995 when we hit 3.9 million. We just touched it in 2010, finishing up the year with 4.1, but we didn't break below 4 million 
uh, since 1995. So we'll see how the rest of the year goes. Existing home sales over a 10 year view. Again, a striker, striker red line across here. So you can kind of see even in the lockdowns, we're now below the lockdown numbers. We had this little burst, it goes way down. We had another little burst and then it went back down and here we are today. Uh, this is why it's so critical to price your listing competitively. You have to understand what's going on in the markets or you can't understand how to price a listing. Comps that are older than 60 days, 45 days, 30 days, the, the closer the better. Anything 90 days is old news. It does not matter. Look at this number right here. Look how fast it's dropped. If you're pricing based on 90 six month comp, 90 day to six month comps, you're always going to overprice the listing. And that's important to understand, critical to understand, actually. On a 25 year review, you can see how this works. You see in the media, they're talking about the lowest uh, productivity in 12 years, and it is since 2011, actually. And the thing that I notice about this, when you step back from a chart, you can kind of see the real trends. And you can see the trends of every time the government starts monkeying with the money, we have this. And every time they monkey with the money, we have this. And they monkey with the money, and we have this. If they just leave the markets alone, we could equalize, we could reach equilibrium, but apparently they don't feel the need for that. And of course, it's not politically expedient. So those are lagging indicators. Those are things that are behind us. What is ahead of us is, is what's going to close next month. And the way we look at that is pending home sales. Uh, well, they're down. Uh, August pending home sales were down 0.2% month over month and 12.6%, nearly 13% year over year. You've probably seen this in the news, but you may not have seen how it breaks out by region, which you can see the index is here. Uh, the South in particular was down 17.6 um, year over year and the 9.1 sequentially. Sequentially means month over month. OK, uh, and the guys out West, uh, they're just getting hammered. Bless their hearts. The Midwest even, too, is getting hammered. So uh, looks like the Northeast, unbelievably, is doing better than some on a sequential basis. Anyway, down nearly 13%. That's a predictor of what happens next month. Another predictor of what happens next month is the showing activity. And you can see on your, your red line right here, which is the 2023 weekly average, is tracking almost identical to the blue, which is 2021. I find that encouraging because I find that 2021, at least the first half of 2021, was a pretty good year. So I'm, I'm glad to see that it's tracking and not dropping off the cliff like some of these other years have done. We'll see what next month brings. It, you know, it takes 12 months to make a year, but we always try to look at it. All this said, the thing, the big issue that we're having locally in, in, in on a national basis is the single family home prices are still not, not declining. This is a three year review and you can see that we are only slightly off the peak of June of 2022. It's really interesting what happens in these scenarios. If you want to look at it in a longer term view, a 10 year view, uh, you can see here, this part of the chart, I would call normalcy, okay? The part that I'm outlining there, that's normalcy. You have the seasonality, you have ups and downs, you have ups and downs, but the gradual trend is generally up. And then you have this garbage that happened in 2020, and it just goes berserk. Now we're reaping the rewards of that. So go back a slide, and you can see what I'm talking about on a closer three-year view, and then forward on a 10-year view, and you can see how bizarre our markets have become. Um why this is happening? Why are, you know, interest rates are up, mortgage rates are up, costs are up, inflation is up, everything is up. Everything that says nothing should be happening is up. Why are prices not declining? Inventory. One word, inventory. This is the one year review that you can see here. You can see that our inventory is off the bottom, but it's still way low. And if you look at that over a historical period, the historic mean on, on housing inventory in America is 2.275 million properties for sale. And right now, our current run rate is 1.1 million. So we're approximately running at a consistent 50% of what is normal for America in inventory. And interest rates are the reason why. Okay, this is from yesterday. It's 928. Mortgage Daily News, the national average, 9.6%. And that's down five bips, meaning it's an improvement uh, from 7.65 the day before. And this is Mortgage Daily News I have found to be the best national thermometer of mortgage rates because they include so many different inputs. 
Um, but you can go there. It's free service. It's not really even a service. It's just a website. And this comes straight from their main website. If you want to see what's going on the Jumbo, this is kind of interesting because the Jumbo is now tracking at the same cost of the 30-year fixed. That rarely happens. It's just kind of weird. Um, if you look at the 30-year fixed rate mortgage that we are now the highest in 23 years, you would have to go all the way back to December 15th of 2020 to have the rate that we have today. Many of you listening to this, many of you watching this have never experienced a mortgage environment like this, and it's crushing your business, and I get it. Here's another stat I'll throw at you, um, that 91.8% of all mortgages in existence today are sub 6%, meaning less than 6%, 82.4% or less than 5%, 62% or less than 4%, and there's still a quarter of a the 23.5%, a quarter of the mortgages out there are less than 3%. Those people are not going to move unless they have to. They're not going to move because they want a new kitchen. They're going to renovate that kitchen. Um, they're not going to move in many cases because they just need more sleeping space. They're going to add another room onto the house. They've got the golden goose and they're not going to kill it right now. Um, we'll see what happens. This is all based on the, on the cost of money. And the Federal Reserve has been pumping money into the, into the environment for years, up until about two years ago. And then they started tightening. And that's what's caused all this. Here's how, it, how the rubber hits the road, right? In, in little over a year, the average consumer with a $3,000 a month housing budget, their purchasing power has declined by nearly 15%. They've gone from the ability to buy a $500,000 house to only being able to afford a $425,000 house. This is why your listing is not moving. You overpriced your house according to what the current conditions are. You need to take that into consideration. You need to take this information and explain it to your client when you're out there in the world, you're out there sitting across the table, the kitchen table from them, trying to explain this to them. You need to show them these stats. If they're pricing according to last year or year before or year before that or what their cousin sold their house for two weeks ago, they're pricing it wrong. It's constantly changing and you have to keep up with that. Purchase mortgage index, which is basically uh, all the mortgages that get applied for. This is people applying for mortgages of all types is an indicator of impending or future home sales. OK, you can see exactly now that it's the lowest in 28 years since 1995. People are the whole market is slowed down. The whole market is slowed down. OK, all that's kind of depressing. I get it. I'm sorry. But it's reality. And the reason I want to bring this to you is because many of you don't have access to the same data that I have subscribed to that I can glean this information from. In trading economics is where that chart comes from. If you know what to look for, that's a free site. The Federal Reserve is a free site. There are others that I use in this analysis that are not free that you can subscribe to. It's kind of discouraging. It's kind of negative, And I don't mean it to be that way. I just want to give you a dose of reality on what's going on in the world today so you can prepare your business. Um, we can get into that here in just a second. We talk about the 10 things successful people do on a daily basis, but I want to throw some positive stuff at you. Okay. The positive stuff is we have some great equity in our homes. Uh, you know, your home is the, is the biggest investment most people make in their entire lifetime. And it is a positive when you see that investment grow, when you see that asset increase in value. In Nazi, in the, in the United States, it's now hit $52 trillion. It's a 176% increase since 2017. It's even better in the national market. It's a 230% increase. Okay. I take that as a positive. That means that your asset is actually gaining strength. And that is good for everybody. It strengthens the economy. Even if it fell off 10% or 20% or 30%, you're still sitting on a 200% increase in asset value. And I will take that deal as an investor any day of the week. So that's the angle you need to help with your clients, help them understand that. The other positive is we have more building here in, in the Middle Tennessee area. You can see that Nashville is uh, one of the top 10 metros with, new, with most new construction houses planned. You can see the other properties there if you're listening to this and you happen to be close to one of those other markets, then I take that as a positive. We're number nine, so that's good. That means there's more, more inventory beginning to come online. And there are other factors also. If you happen to be in the South and listening to this, then Zillow says, thank God you live in the South because 34% of prospective buyers were in the South, okay? The Northeast was slim. The Midwest was slim. Southwest or the West was slim. 
you can see the numbers there and I've highlighted them for you. Percentage of successful buyers within the South, highest percentage, highest percentage of household decision makers, highest percentage of U.S. adults. The South is where it's happening. If you're not here, bless your heart. I also say that the national market snapshot, according to Zillow, is doing really good. Uh, you can see the blue line down here. This is percentage of homes sold above list price. Blue is down here. You can see how crazy it was in years past. So we're getting back down to the normal mean average, which is a very positive thing. Predictive analytics. Uh, this is a combination of survey of the Mortgage Bankers Association, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and NAR. They collectively cast their votes on what the future is going to bring for the next couple of years. They're saying 2023 is going to finish up on average at 4.3 million. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll see. Um, 2024 is 4.7, and then NAR is the only one who's willing to go out to 2025, and they say it's going to be 5.1. We hit the peak of 6 million a couple of years ago. I think, honestly, it's going to be five to seven years before we see 6 million transactions in the United States again in, an, in a 12-month basis. I hope I'm wrong on that, but that's what I'm thinking, and I also think they're wrong on this. I think this is going to end up at about 4.1 for the year total, which is not bad, not a bad variance. But I ran across something this morning that was kind of disturbing, and I want to bring it to you. And I just added this slide literally this morning to the presentation. And I, this is one of the newsletters that I subscribe to, and this was a breaking news, according to the um, CEO. And I'll just read it for you. CEO of the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock's Larry Fink, said the 10-year Treasury yields to stay at 5% or higher. Sounds familiar. Jamie Dimon's been saying the world may not be prepared for a worst case scenario of the Federal Reserve benchmark interest rates hitting 7% along with stagflation. Uh, and then Bill Ackman, who if you don't know who Bill Ackman is, you need to go look him up. He's one of the most successful investors in America that you probably never heard of. Um, could see a 10-year yield approaching 5% in the short-term rates. Sounds like leaders of the world's biggest and most influ influential firms are preparing for higher for longer rates and even higher as a worst case scenario. This higher discount rate is already beginning to weigh on equities. Ouch. That was the newsletter blast that I got this morning. And let me kind of explain that. These are the things you pay attention to. Um, Larry Fink, 5% higher. Jamie Dimon, 7%. Bill Ackman, 5%. What does that mean? Well, this guy is talking about the Fed funds rate. He's believing that the Fed funds rate is going to hit 7%. Right now, it's 5 Three days ago, 5.25 to 5.5. It'll stay in that range until the next meeting. We'll see what happens if they raise us again or not. I don't think they're going to go down. Uh, and then these other guys are talking about the 10-year treasury. It's right now today at 4.54. So let's think about this for a minute. If you have interest rates at 7.6, which are based on treasuries at 4.5, and 4.5 goes to 5, what's going to happen to the interest rates? See what I'm saying? They're going to go up. Here's the bottom line. Very smart people, a lot smarter than me, leaders of the world's biggest and most influential financial firms are preparing for higher for longer rates and even higher as a worst case scenario. So my point, today's environment is the new normal. You need to learn to deal with it. Adjust your business accordingly. Work your database, work your database, work your database, because your database is where your success is. That's what's going to get you through this. Pay attention to the market stats. Do it on a daily basis. Know your stuff when you walk in the door. This combined with the class action lawsuits, which we talked about ad nauseum, are going to change our industry. And my encouragement is for you to be prepared for that, Mike. Greatest encouragement is I have never seen such a wonderful opportunity for professional business people to excel because the competition will fall away. And that's 100% up to you. Do you want to be one that falls away or do you want to be one that excels? Pay attention, learn your stuff, attend the classes. We have more classes coming every day. This will help get you through this market. I'll get off my soapbox. Let's get to the meat of the matter now. Incredibly, I have been in business 42 years, okay? 42 years, most of it as an entrepreneur. Benchmark Realty is actually the sixth company that I've started and then transitioned through. So I've learned a few things along the way. A lot of people say, well, you, you, yeah, well, you just know a lot. Well, you see the scars on my face? 
it's not all from acne. It's from the brutalization that I experienced out there in the marketplace. And if I can bring some of that to you to help you understand what the bigger picture looks like, then that's my mission. That's my purpose. That's what I'm here for. And that's what I want to do. So that's what these are life lessons from that. And I think uh, I guess it's going to pop a question in there about uh, in the chat question. So maybe you can answer that. Pay attention to that. So let's start off. We're counting down from 10 to one. And I prioritize them on how the ones that I feel are most important, least important. They're all important. But I, they're really, I could do 50 on this list, but I've done 10. So let's start with number 10. Successful people do their research to solve problems and they never overcomplicate the solution. Complex solutions only make you sound boring. They do not make you sound smart. Always, always, always keep it simple. A lot of people look at our systems here at Benchmark and say, oh, they're just so simple. They're so simple, then why isn't everybody else doing it? When I got in this business, I said, you know, I am not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I do not know everything, but I'm learning every day. But the way you guys are doing business makes no sense to me at all. So we design simple solutions, and that's the key to your success in your business is designing simple solutions. Simple solutions lead to what? Repeatable outcomes. You know, what good is a solution if the outcome is not repeatable? The only repeatable solution is a simple solution. Must be simple. And here's the key point, though, is once you've developed the solution, make sure you've documented it and it becomes a process because consistent processes always lead to repeatable outcomes. And then it becomes automatic. Step one, step two, step three, boom. Step one, step two, step three, boom. That's how this works. And that's what I'm talking about. And if you're herky-jerky all over the field every day, you need to get yourself organized and stop that crap because it's going to kill you and you will never be successful. That's what I'm talking about. Develop your system, standardize your processes, and you will be successful. Number nine, successful people prioritize their daily activities. You've heard it before. You can either run the day or the day will run you. That sounds like a cliche, but... It is what it is. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you never want to confuse the urgent and the important with the urgent and the unimportant. And that is classic Stephen Covey right there. If you've never read The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, you need to go get that book and read it this week. I'm telling you, it is such golden nuggets of wisdom in that book. I've read it four times and I can tell you definitively it is wonderful. You want to use the quadrant of priorities and your day will flow a whole lot smoother. What is the quadrant? And again, this comes from Stephen Covey. I take no credit for this, but I found it magnificent wisdom. It's a quadrant where on the left-hand side, you have the urgent and the important. Uh, excuse me, on top, you have the urgent and the non-urgent. And on the left, you have the important and the non-important. And then you divide your activities into those four quadrants. Quadrant run is the important and the urgent. That's your crises, your deadline-driven activities, your medical emergencies. The quadrant number two is um, the preparation and planning, values, clarification, relationship building, and networking. Those are important, but they're not urgent. Quadrant three, which is not important, that's meeting other people's priorities and expectations. Definitely not important. Most emails and some phone calls and the frequent interruptions that happen in your day. Those are not important, but they sound urgent. The ringing phone is urgent, but it's not important. And then finally, quadrant four is the escapist activities that we all engage in. Social media, mindless watching TV, um, most social media, and, and then there's busy work around the house, right? That is just not urgent and it's not important and it needs to go away. So in red, I have notated quadrant one are those that you manage. Quadrant two are your strategic focus. Quadrant three, use caution with them or avoid them altogether. And then quadrant four, you avoid them completely. Get them out of your life because they are time wasters and time killers. And one thing I will give you is a bit of advice that I have offered in some classes. If you want to increase your, if you want to double your income next year, there's one simple thing you can do. At the end of every day, take 15 minutes and on a yellow notepad, see my yellow notepad back there? On a yellow notepad, write down the five most important things for you to accomplish the next day. It does two things. One, it embeds it in your subconscious. And number two, it allows you to think contemplatively. You're strategizing so that you don't have as many urgent crises that come up. You'll start the ground running the next morning and get crazy productive. It's amazing how well that works. This, it takes 15 minutes at the end of every day. Write down five things that you must accomplish the next day. And then the next morning, you've got your checklist and you're off and running. If you don't do that, what happens? 
you wind up down here. Okay. Other people get in your life, the interruptions, the constant phone calls, all that emails. Well, I got to respond to this email. I got to respond to it. It is important to respond to emails. It's important to communicate with people. It's important to respect others. Absolutely. But you don't want them to run your life. And you never want to fill the voids with this over here. This quadrant right here is the death quadrant. This will kill your business quicker than anything else you can do. And I see it every day. People on social media posting garbage about nothing. That's not productive. It's not helping anybody. It's not making anybody really feel good because everybody reads your stuff and feels inferior. Why are you doing it? Stop it. This quadrant right here will kill you and your business. Okay, I'll get off that. Number eight, successful people consistently invest in themselves, their whole person. You have three basic columns that drive you, that create you. Okay, you have the physical column, the spiritual column, and the financial column. We talked earlier about the financial column tools that we're bringing to help you with that. The greatest asset though you possess to get you through life, to get you through all of this, your fuel is your energy. And if your tank goes empty, the engine stops running. <clears throat> if you don't completely, you know, it's like any engine. If you don't replenish the fuel, the fuel, your the engine will stop running. And you can't do that. You can only resupply your energy by exercising regularly, eating real food, a thorough development of your spiritual center, who you are, and experiencing the peace of mind found in financial stability. We're bringing you the tools to help with some of that. Bottom line is you cannot draw your energy if you've not invested to maintaining growth. You, you'll be running on fumes and you'll eventually burn up and crash and burn and that'll be the end of your career and you will not have a happy life. Number seven, successful people are relentless in their quest to sharpen their knowledge and skill set. Relentless is the key word. That means constant education, constant networking, constant self-improvement, a relentless sharpening of the saw. Every day, wake up with a quest for knowledge. Every day, try to find something new about the competition. Every day, find something new about the market. Stop the coasting. Work on this. And I'll give you a perfect example of somebody who is well-known, Peyton Manning. This is absolutely a true story that I'm telling you here. Study of game film was legendary. 100 plus hours of study for each opponent. He'd watch every play of every game that opponent had played the previous season, as well as every play of every game the opponent had played this season. He did it for every single opponent, and he was a world-class athlete. He sells the heck out of Domino's Pizzas now because he probably does the same thing with his competitors, right? He's a competitor. If you're a competitor, you will invest this sort of effort in your business. It doesn't just fall from the sky. And education is a constant ongoing thing. If you walk in my office, the first thing you see is my, if you walk in my business, uh, sorry, my home, if you walk in my home, the first thing you see is my office on the right-hand side. The walls are lined with books. And people will ask me sometimes and wonder, have you read those all those books? I say, yeah, some of them four or five times. The ones that I didn't find worth keeping, I got rid of. These are the ones that I find worth keeping. Audible.com. I don't listen to music. I listen to podcasts and I listen to books and I will probably process on my Audible account 120 books this year. That's just the way I am from my home to here, from here to wherever I'm going. I've constantly got the earbuds in. I'm listening to a book or a podcast, learning something. That's how you have to do it. And I'm not the only one that believes that. Isaac Asmanoff does too. He said, education isn't something you can ever finish. Successful people never stop learning. Number six, successful people never make excuses, nor do they accept excuses from others. This is a big deal because you is, we're talking about taking personal responsibility for everything in your life. You have to take personal responsibility. If you're not as successful as you want to be, that is no one else's fault but yours. It's available to everyone in America who wants and seeks it. Self-sabotage is a big problem for most of us, though. It's a prowling lion seeking to devour your energy and words matter. What you say, you speak into existence and your subconscious is always listening to everything you say, even if it's in jest. So be careful of your words. Be extremely careful that I don't want to turns into I can't in your mind. That's a deadly differentiation there. Tell yourself you can or tell yourself you can't. Either way, you'll be 100% right. 
So it's important the words you use and stop with the self-sabotage. Take responsibility for what you're doing. And when you do find the excuse cropping into your life, deconstruct that, break it down, figure out where it came from, understand why you have them, and then figure out how to turn those into motivation because it's critical for you to do that. And then successful people always own the outcomes by holding themselves accountable and accepting the consequences of their mistakes and of their sloppy work. They're kind of the same, okay? You can't just say, well, that was a mistake and move on. You have to take that mistake deconstruct it, learn from it, put it in your memory banks, move forward and use it the next time you, you find that same encounter. Number five, successful people never take all the credit themselves. I can't tell you how important this one is. Humility is to be admired. Hubris is to be avoided. Hubris is your PR, your self PR, your self promotion. Avoid that crap. It does nobody any good. Nobody cares, okay? Focus on the win for everybody. Bring everybody along with you on the success, not on thumping your own chest. Because it sounds false and arrogant to most listeners. They just roll their eyes when they see it. And real estate agents are notorious for it. It's not bad to celebrate a success, but the overriding thumping of one's chest, look what I did, look what I did, look what I did. It's not helpful to anybody. And most people find it offensive. So beware of the cancerous danger also of feeling resentment when your accomplishments are not recognized. These kind of go together, right? And this is why people want to thump their chest because they say, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I'm great. You didn't hear me. I'm great. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, right? You can't get it in your head, though, because nobody acknowledged you that you're a failure. You cannot do that. You can't. It is a cancer that will eat you up. And the way you stop that is by always maintaining an attitude of gratitude. It's never me. It's always we. And there's a natural synergy and a grateful attitude that attracts others and helps you with your success. People are drawn to it and they will want to help you develop a desire to help you achieve your goals. It's critically important. Those things run together. Okay. Number four. Successful people never violate their core principles, even if those principles are ridiculed by others. Put your shell on, put your shield on, all right? Put your shield of faith on. And Ephesians talks about the shield of faith, and that's what we're talking about here. You have to have passion. Passion is the key to persevering. Burning, searing passion for what you do and your mission. You must be passionate about your mission because even a dead fish can swim downstream. And Many real estate people the last few years have literally been dead fish swimming downstream in a market that's rising so fast. You didn't have to be a rocket scientist to be a hero because you just put the sign in the yard and in 24 hours you had multiple offers and you looked like a hero to the seller. That was not you. That was the market. You were the dead fish swimming downstream. And now that the stream has turned around, what are you going to do? Now, I'll give you an example of Winston Churchill, Okay. He had sterling principles and passion. He was dedicated. The difference between him and the rest of us is that he stuck to those principles despite the huge odds and costs. And I hope you know who Winston Churchill is. Some may not. World War II, he was a prime minister of Great Britain. He was the one that phrased the phraseology of never, 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 never quit. Okay. But it was because of his dedication and passion for his principle and for his purpose is that is the, the, I think the sole reason that Great Britain still speaks English. Otherwise, they'd be speaking German right now, okay? English would be a second language to German because they wouldn't have won the war. So all of us have principles. You need to sit down, get some quiet time, some thinking time, some introspective time, and figure out what yours are. Know yours and commit to living them, or you will waver when times get tough. Number three, Successful people have written goals and engage in daily planning. This is kind of related to one earlier, but I'm going to take it one step earlier, one step further. And Zig Ziglar said it best. You can always hit a goal you don't have. Always begin with the end in mind. Again, another Stephen Covey principle. Do you have goals? Do you have them written down? Interesting poll popping up now. Fill that out. Let us know. I'm going to let it roll for just a minute and see what we get there.
You want to develop your BHAGs also. What is a BHAG? It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. It's Jim Collins. And if you know who Jim Collins is, see the good to great, how the mighty fall, all the others. BHAG example is we want to be the market leader by 40%. So what if we miss it by 10%? We're still 30% larger than the next closest competitor. Bottom line is if your goals don't scare you, they are way too small. Okay? So pay attention to that. And you want to use the SMART method. I'm going to put a plug in now for next month's Fridays with Philip. We're doing business planning. It'll be the last one this year. I believe it's the last it's the last Friday of the month. I believe it's the 27th. And we're going to do business planning. And business planning involves this, setting SMART goals. What are SMART goals? Specific, measurable, assignable, realistic, and then time sensitive. Okay? Specific means they target a specific area for improvement. They are measurable. They are assignable. Specifically, who will do it? And they're realistic. State what results can be realistically achieved given the re available resources and they're time specific. Specify when those results will be achieved. All right. I'm going to share the results of the, of the last one now of the poll. Um, I think I can do this. Okay. Let me move it over to this screen. Can you see the, can you see the, uh, Gus, can you see the, uh, the poll there? Yeah, they, they should be able to see it. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. So, uh, 65% have goals, 35% have goals, but not written down and 0% of you are lying because I promise you, if it's not written down, it's not a goal. Okay. Write your goals down. All right. Thanks for participating in that. Moving on to number two. Successful people know their mission and never lose faith in that mission. Now, mission is different from who you are, your why. Okay. Successful people know their why and they stick to it. No matter the headwinds, you may need to adjust your sales, but you never close them. You never fold your sales. Successful people are unshakable in the belief that what they are doing is right. And this steadfastness keeps you from wavering when times get tough. And I found an interesting quote here that I want to throw out there for you. A line from a German play says it best. Those who danced were thought to be quite insane by those who could not hear the music. I have been accused of being quite insane. I'm sure you have been accused of being quite insane at times because they can't understand your why. And that's the key. That's what I'm talking about here. All right. Finally, number one. Successful people never quit. Never quit. The person who wins is the person who gets back up one more time than they got knocked down. No matter how many times it takes, you get back up one more time than you got knocked down. That's how you win. Thomas Edison did it. We, we know his name to this day. He failed, but he failed a thousand times at inventing the light bulb. And his attitude was, I didn't fail. I just learned a thousand ways to not do it. That's the attitude you have to have. And the analogy I like to use is a football field because I used to play football. Unbelievably, I know you can't remember that you don't realize this, but I was a pretty serious athlete in my day years ago. When I graduated from high school, I weighed 198 pounds and had a 31-inch waist. And I was a starting defensive end for a football team here in town. It doesn't really matter, but the bottom, I like to use that analogy of dedication. So life is kind of like a, playing a football on a fogged in field where you, you can't see the yard numbers. You can't see the line markers. All you can see, you can't even see the goal line. Yet you keep pushing forward with every play, every play, every play, every play. And how horrible would it be if you gave up exhausted and walked off the field only to realize that you were inches from the goal line. And that's the way life is. You don't know how it's going to work out but you've got to keep pressing forward. You can never quit, never quit, never quit. Quoted Winston Churchill earlier. I'll quote him here. That was his message before Parliament. We will never quit. We will never, ever, ever, ever quit in his pursuit of defending Great Britain against Germany during World War II. Bottom line is if you desire success, you must get out of the comfort zone and stretch for the growth zone. You will never have success sitting in the comfort zone. You must get over here to the growth zone. The only downside is you've got to go through the fear zone and the learning zone. 
That's the part I'm trying to encourage you with today. Fear of moving away from comfort, letting go of what you have to achieve what you can achieve, and then learning how to do that. Those two things, getting rid of that fear and adopting a learning attitude is what's going to get you to the growth zone. And growth zone is where success is. And I might even advocate that growth zone is where survival in our industry exists in today's marketplace. So be careful of that. Be understanding of that. Understand what I'm talking about there. And I'll give you two final takeaways. Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, they're pretty easy to understand. They really are. Takeaway one, it's not about being the best every time. It's about being better than you were all the time. Okay? Being better than you were yesterday all the time. I'm going to say it again. Let me read it right this time. Okay? It's not about being the best every time. It's about being better than you were yesterday all the time. There. And then the other one here is, I think, critically important. Always, always, always do the next right thing in every situation. Even if it costs you some skin or some money, do the next right thing. You and your team would be better off in the long run for it. I want to tell a story about this one. We got a few more minutes here. We're okay. I want to tell a story about this one uh, that I had a phone call this week from one of our affiliates. And he's a fellow that's been with us for, I don't know, seven, eight years, nine years, maybe. Young guy. Of course, everybody's younger than me. He said, I want to tell, I want to share something with you that I uh, uh, listened to you a long time ago. Talk about this takeaway number two here. And he says, here's a, here's a practical application of it. And he didn't know I was going to do this today. And I don't have his permission, so I'm not going to use his name. But he'd been working with a client who was a fairly successful individual in the entertainment world. Doesn't mean they're a business person. It just means they've made a lot of money in the entertainment world. And they decided they wanted to buy a house. And they had kind of looked at this house and he didn't, he showed it to them, but he didn't really show it to them. And so they decided they were going to buy the house. Anyway, they found out they couldn't buy the house. And, and they wanted him to help. And he said, well, I'll help you since you found the house. I'll, I'll do anything I can to help you in this process. If I don't get paid for it, I don't get paid for it because I'm I'm going to help you because you're an acquaintance and you need help and this is the right thing to do. Anyway, that didn't work out. And a few weeks later, they came back. Their business manager of the, of the client said, look, we're going to ask you to help us now on a different home and you're going to get paid. And this young man, because he did the right thing the first time, is going to walk away with a $200,000 commission check in a few weeks. Always, always, always do the right thing in every situation, even if it costs you money or skin or whatever. You and your team would be better off in the long run. All right. I want to thank you for joining me today. It's been a real party, huh? Some good, some happy, some sad, some bad. It is what it is. I'm glad you were here. Please always drop me suggestions for what you'd like to hear. I can put them in the pipeline for next year. As I said, our last Fridays with Philip will be coming up October 27th at 9 a.m. And we will, for Benchmarkians, we'll record that and put the slide deck up on the, uh, the agent resources, affiliate resources. Uh, and then as we will with this one is too. So if you want these stats and statistics and charts and graphs and all that stuff, you can go dig them up yourself or you can contact me. Or if you're a benchmarking, you can actually reach into the uh, agent resources and get them. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. Drop me an email. Let me know what you thought. I really appreciate you being here. And I think that concludes what we're going to do today. All right. Thanks for being here. Y'all have a great weekend. Much success to all of you. Bye-bye.